So hey everyone, uh, welcome to uh, I guess November uh, by the time this airs, and given that it's November, it's already time to start thinking about Thanksgiving, the holidays, and going to visit mom, which I would like to do sometime within the next four months. I still need to work out an exact timetable as to when would work best for me, um, but things are going well at the job. I just had my first uh, annual evaluation, I guess. I wasn't sure if I was going to have one because I had only been there since February, so... But uh, it went well, um, pretty much really, you know, all good news. It's like everything's going about as well as can be expecting, you know. Um, but it's uh, it's really fitting in, you know, I'm really fitting in well there, I think. And, you know, it's kind of, I guess, I guess I'd almost hesitate to say, you know, the ideal job for me, you know, as far as, as you know, if uh, if I have to work a day job, it's like this is kind of like the, you know my my perfect scenario i guess because for the most part you know i'm by myself most of the day i'm able to uh work on what i need to work on at my own pace you know of course obviously sometimes i get tasks handed to me which is fine you know but um by and large it's just you know i i kind of feel like there's a level of trust there um because you know my supervisors aren't always asking me what i'm doing or or you know having issues or you know what not so it's like they you know they know that i'm doing what i'm supposed to be doing and that it's being you know everything that's supposed to be taken care of is being taken care of in a reasonably efficient manner that you know everything's being worked on nothing's really being forgotten and all that kind of stuff so i mean it really works out well um you know most mornings i have time to just kind of get settled and just uh work my way into the work day you know i usually can take a lunch although it seems like more often than not people seem to come find me between you know during the one hour that i'm on lunch but you know i i uh, started closing my door a little bit during lunchtime and i got a, a sign that says i'm at lunch but we'll see um but for the most part you know i mean i don't usually mind if it, you know if people come in and need things um but it's it's it is so yeah, it's going well you know that's i guess basically the bottom line you know, we had a, a chili cook-off at work, and I tried a couple different kinds of chili, and they were all pretty good. So it was, you know, a nice activity on Friday, but it also kind of meant my brain sort of, like, kicked in the weekend mode a few hours early. So the afternoon was hard to, to try and be productive. But, um, let's see. In, uh, let's see. I mean, in writing news, I'm working on, uh, I guess getting back on track again um i'm still working on that short story that i mentioned a couple of weeks ago um uh, you know i'm i have a bad habit of of kind of i guess working on things until i hit what feels like a wall and i think my wall detection sensor is way too sensitive you know i i yeah, as as you know, even though if I have notes and I know what the story is supposed to be about, I'll hit something that feels off or or you know or stress or just anxiety or just whatever will cause me to think that you know this is terrible and this won't work, and then I kind of just avoid it and work on other things or try and work on other things, and it, I think it, it you know I mean I've been trying to focus on projects. Uh, more but you know i think uh it definitely is one of those things that i need to try and i guess uh, see if i can stick with because i think it'll help the in the long run the other problems but um getting there is still a little tricky but i want to try and work on a small project and a large project pretty much on a daily basis um t depending on how much time i have but you know i'm three quarters of the way through a draft of, of of winterfall and mostly it just requires some adjustments to act four because um even though i've kind of known where the first half of the book is going uh yeah you know, i've made pretty much i guess major well i don't even know if i call them major but i've made some fairly significant edits i guess to uh to 
Acts 2 and 3 as I've been working on them. Because, you know, Act 2 originally had a very different plan, and I kind of changed it so that I think it fits better now. And, you know, then I was working on Act 3, and I kind of changed direction a little bit with that because I had a thought about how it would work better. And, you know, a twist that I put in at the end of Act 3 is kind of going to shift things in a direction that kind of what I was originally planning for Act 4 probably won't work. So I need to figure out where uh, this direction is going. And I think I know um, something that'll work that'll satisfy my my uh, sensors, you know, my cool sensors or, or whatever, but we'll see. But that's, uh, you know, that's what I'm working on right now. It's like I'm trying to work on uh, basically a lot of Winterfall stuff. And, you know, it's like I'd like to get to the point where I can uh, stream again and show people things I'm working on and, and so on. And just, uh, you know, because, I mean, I guess I, I had gotten to the point where I was kind of really nervous about showing people anything that I thought might not be in its final stage. And I don't know if anybody else feels that or if that's something that comes across a lot. But, uh, you know, it's kind of why in terms of, of visible activity, I've been very low key lately, uh, except, of course, for the video work, which at the very least has been going well and continues to be a source of of uh, motivation for me because, you know, I, I'm able to keep that going. But uh, let's see. Uh, speaking of which video news, videos have been going very well. Um, this week, I don't have as much time because we have a family obligation, so I'm only going to be doing a vlog today. But fortunately, I think I'm far enough ahead to uh, be able to absorb it. And um, I also think that I don't have... I haven't managed to finish reading uh, books to work on another review yet. So you know, I still have to record the video plate for Sirius, I think. And um, I am working on still reading Artifact Space and Gideon the Ninth. And, you know, so far Artifact Space is going very well. I think I'm about halfway through the book. So I'm hoping that in another two weeks I will finish the novel and be moving on to my next uh, piece of reading. And, you know, Gideon the Ninth, I'm a little bit past the quarter mark. And, I mean, so far I'd say that I like the narrator's smart assery i mean i don't even know but the unique ways she has to describe the world but it's at the quarter mark and i'm still not entirely sure what's going on because it kind of feels like they're you know they they've been summoned to the first house for this opportunity to become what they call a lector which apparently is like a big deal in the necromancy and uh, necromancers in the space world but at least at this point I'm not exactly sure what they're supposed to do next. It's kind of like they're just waiting for something or or that they're talking or standing around and it's just the characters are interacting, but I haven't seen at least, you know, to my awareness, the end of act 1 where we've kicked into the point of no return. It's like we're sitting here at in the first house, but I don't know where it's going yet. So uh, we'll we'll see. Uh, um, let's see. Uh, as far as uh, I also should uh, can announce that I have signed up to the Delta Flyers Patreon as a producer, because um, after Eagle Moss went out of business, you know I had a small amount of money uh, available that I was, uh, and plus I'm contemplating. I and I'll talk about that in a minute. But anyway, I have been uh, listening to the Delta Flyers and the Seventh Rule and Investigates. And of course, if you can't tell, they're all Star Trek actor podcasts. Uh, Investigates, Gates, talks to various other uh, of her co-stars, pretty much about life, love, everything. Um, I've only listened to a few of those so far. Uh, <clears throat> I've been listening to the Seventh Rule, which is... Uh, originally Ciroc and Aaron Eisenberg and Ryan T. Husk. And, uh, you know, I was kind of listening to that and, it, you know, a lot of it's bittersweet because, you know, it's, it's, uh, the last bit of, of Aaron, uh, Aaron's work that I will be able to get to enjoy. Uh, cause apparently I know they only finished, uh, recording their podcast of the first season before Aaron's, uh, passing. 
but it's probably one of the few celebrity deaths that's really affected me, you know, really bothered me about about it happening just because um you know Aaron was very friendly, very real. Uh, I got to meet him once and I really wish I got an opportunity to get a picture with him. <coughs> and um you know, it's one of those few <coughs> one of those few cases, excuse me. Where you you hear about a celebrity death and it just it actually just really bothers you in a way that it would like if it was a relative of yours that you were really close to that kind of thing you know i mean and, and i know that's you know maybe uh you know that's just <clears throat> you know maybe that's just like i guess uh common among uh trek fans maybe but i don't know i just kind of felt like uh you know that kind of 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 appreciation doesn't you know get extended from me that often or at least i i like to think that i'm selective with uh you know who matters to me and uh you know aaron definitely was one of those actors that really did and i really would have liked to have had more opportunities to interact with him um but i uh let's see and you know delta flyers of course is uh garrett wang and uh robert duncan mcneil's rewatch podcast they've been going through voyager right now i think they're in the mid well early to middle of the sixth season so i'm kind of late on the bus uh with that but you know i didn't know about it for a long time and also um with uh with podcasts i just at least for a long time i never had you know the time to do these things because you know podcasts required you to have some time to listen or some way to listen and and uh, or just you know some time to watch which for me is always at a premium um you know whether things are going well whether things are going poorly it's always it's always a uh f you know time for everyone as, as it is is a finite resource so i um really had never <clears throat> had any time to just sit and listen to a podcast until I discovered some sort of app on my tablet. And I don't remember how I found this or what uh, prompted me to discover it, but I found a podcast uh, app on my tablet, which let me download episodes and listen to them, you know, as I was on the go. So, you know, sometimes if I'm driving to or from work, I'll listen to a podcast if I feel the mood or, um, you know, sometimes some days I listen to music. But in any case, uh, it's given me the opportunity to listen to some podcasts like Voice of Dog, uh, which I've been a part of a couple of times and uh delta flyers investigates and and seventh rule and right now that's enough for me um i know that uh, anson mount also has one which i uh, got his card for which i probably should check out at some point but you know it's it's i don't want to overwhelm myself with too many at once because apparently you know there's a lot of podcasts out there and i think the pandemic helped with that a little you know getting people to to start a lot of podcasts and such um but anyway, I would like to say that, you know, as far as the Delta Flyers, you know, it's I, I always enjoyed listening to it because uh, Garrett and Robbie really seem to uh, have some good stories. And, and, you know, I love the energy that they bring to the podcast. I really do. And uh, having met Garrett a few times and, and such, he, he's he's a great person and a lot of fun to interact with. So, you know, he's he's somebody I always look forward to saying hi to at the conventions every year. And, um, you know, signing up for the uh, producer level had resulted in a couple of perks that I was uh, received a little while ago, which I will show you guys now. Uh, the first thing is this nifty little Delta Flyer uh, crew patch, which I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with it yet, but, you know, because I don't really usually have patches on things, but I'll keep it somewhere. You know, maybe it'll, it'll, it'll find a home. I'm sure I'll find a place for it and the other thing is that they sent along this uh signed photo which let's see if i can frame this well okay maybe not the best but you know you can kind of see it and it, it it's it looks really nice so uh you know thank you garrett and robbie for for the perks and you know i look forward to listening to the rest of the series podcast episodes you know i'm kind of curious if at least a couple of things that uh you know bothered me over the years you know bother them or uh you know just store the you know all the all the stories that they have to tell about having been there and, and made the show 
you know, because um, they they have some some really interesting bits and pieces of of things that you know I never really knew about, and you know, it, it's 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 really interesting to see like a lot of the the behind the scenes stuff and and a lot of things I have to say, um, you, you know, all this all this time later. And it's definitely a podcast that I would recommend if you're a fan of Voyager because the Delta Flyers is really fun. And as far as uh, Patreon, I kind of, let's see, right now I run uh, two separate Patreons. Uh, one which, of course, is for my uh, writing, and the other one I just created as an account as a patron because I wasn't sure if you could do both at the same time. And I'm thinking that what I'm going to do is condense both patreons into one so that i only have to monitor one account and i can just switch between the modes because um you know i can uh i was thinking about it for a long time and i think it'll just make life easier because i never have a chance to comment or interact on the patreon pages just because it's such a pain in the ass to log out of one patreon and log into the other and, and all that kind of stuff i have enough passwords i need to remember as it is but that being said I think I'm going to switch over to a single Patreon. So although, uh, so those folks that I am uh, subscribing to right now, which is like Jackal and Michelle Kreber, odds are, you know, I'm going to keep uh, supporting both of you, but I'm probably going to move it over to my other uh, Patreon. And uh, I don't know if I'm supporting anybody else right now. I know I was thinking about possibly signing up for uh, Annabelle, a, a fox in a jacket, uh, partly because uh, she only does commissions through Patreon, and I really like her style. But you know, we'll we'll kind of wait and see on that because you know, obviously, um, although I'm doing pretty well these days, <clears throat> for one thing, funds are limited, as they are for most, and also the second thing would be that I, um, yeah, I, I, I. I don't know. I, I forget what I was going to say now. Is but but yeah. You know, I mean, if I if it was possible, I would like to support everybody. But you know, I mean, obviously, you you kind of have to make some choices at at some points. But you know, I do like to support uh, Michelle Kreber because you know her music has always uh, been you know really really uh, entertaining to me, and uh, you know I've liked her since you know My Little Pony days, and. Uh, you know, of course, Jackal, you know, I, I would probably like to increase my pledge uh, with that a little bit and see what, what goes on with that. And um, I don't know what else there is. I guess I guess that's about it, um, uh, at least at least for now. I mean, we'll wait and see. Uh, I, I have also heard that apparently there may be some good news as far as uh, some of the Eagle Moss products, so maybe they'll end up producing... Uh, some more of the ships and uh, you know apparently some of the the stock that was unsold from before the company went out of business is uh, becoming available so you know maybe that's all that's all I guess good news because there were a few that were coming down the pipeline that I just did not have a chance to get to the subscription before the company imploded on itself but uh, we shall see and you know thank you ben robinson for keeping on top of all that because i'm sure you know you didn't have to but it's definitely appreciated by all the folks that used to uh, you know send eagle moss business but you know later today we have a family gathering and uh, i guess that's it for now so i will catch you all later if you like werewolves check out my book blue moon available in paperback and ebook on amazon Thanks for watching. If you liked it, click the subscribe button and leave a comment below. See you next time.